All right, so I'm working on a longer video using the Swanalyzer, but it's taking a lot more time than I thought. So in the meantime, since I promised a short video for Bobby Shafto, I'm just going to do this quick using a model. All right, so we have our observation here already laid out. I'll just lower the camera so we can see a bit better. And let's zoom in. So we have two targets both 14 meters high. Uh, the closest one is at 10.5 kilometers and the farther one is at 36.5 kilometers. And our observer height is 14 meters. We can see as per perspective on a flat plane all points at 14 meters line up at eye level. There's an angle between the visible water at the 36.5 kilometer point, which is represented by this line here. And to eye level, that is an angle of 0 0.022 degrees. So that's essentially our observer height at that distance. And the farther back in distance we go, the smaller that angle will be, but it will never be zero. Um, the horizon will only eventually appear to meet eye level if I were to draw this a farther distance for example now it's at 100 kilometers and we can see this angle is getting smaller so uh, basic perspective stuff there um, don't really need to get into that but what we what we're looking for is in the image uh, which I'll just show here quickly and I gotta set that All right, so in this image, we can see that the water line or the shoreline lines up roughly with where eye level would be on this point at uh, Mesa, and that is 14 meters, basically right where that green ends, right where it sticks out just a little bit. And it's definitely not the best photo to work with, but we can we can agree that that's pretty much pretty close to eye level or at least to the, our 14 meter reference point. So we want to bring that up um, we want to bring this line up to meet this and not our eye level, the actual point on our uh, 14 meter target at 10.5 kilometers. So in order to do that there's two things we could do one is raise our camera height, which obviously didn't happen in the observation. Um, it may have been slightly higher than 14 meters, but it definitely wasn't close to 20 meters, which would be required on a flat plane to geometrically line those two points up. Uh, so the only other way for that apparent relationship to happen is with light bending or the earth bending and um, in this case we would require a concave apparent radius to produce that relationship from the same observer height of 14 meters so let's start with a large concave radius um, so I have to enter a negative to get a concave radius and we can see uh, negative 100,000 kilometers we get a slight rise of this relative to that point. So as we decrease the radius we will get a tighter curve. So let's go down to 50,000 and we can see we're quite a bit higher now but we're still not at that point. Uh, so let's go to 20,000 now. Okay, so we overshot a little bit because now we're seeing this up much higher than that point. And they should be both appearing at the same point to match the photo. So the number that I worked out before that uh, this works out at is a radius of 33,000 kilometers concave. And that gives us both these points lining up. So we have the shoreline at 36.5 lining up with the 14 meter point at 10.5 kilometers. 
And now just to show the geometric relationship we would expect to see on a globe. So here's flat, here's refracted concave, and here is a globe with no refraction. So we can see that this point here needs to be lifted all the way up and above eye level, which is quite a large angle, almost 0.2 degrees. Anyway, uh, the, hopefully the Swanalyzer video will explain this even better if uh, anyone's still unclear, but basically I just wanted to show that uh, the image Bobby Shafto chose to represent flat geometry is far, far from it. And just to show you that again, it's a difference of this versus flat. So concave and flat. Alright, thanks for watching.